so that we can get energized. We are going to tell you a little bit about them, what they do. Javier Gastelou, Monocello Choque, Willy Rolando Cori. They are part of the INE Association. And we would like to know what the INE Association does. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Our organization is non-governmental. We work in Bolivia. We have many different projects. Organizaciones, asociaciones productivas, a quienes se les brinda todo el tema de formación. And we provide all of the trainings, the capacity building to increase production. También trabajamos el tema de finanzas solidarias, lo que nosotros le llamamos fondos solidarios allá con ellos. And so we provide many funds to help them strengthen the work done by a organization in social and solidarity economy. So this is a very broad work, but one of the main things that we have done in the association is believing in people and fostering their initiatives, promoting their initiatives through the SSE perspective. Okay, let me give you a microphone to keep uh, discussing this. Okay, welcome. It's very important that in this forum, we can continue with this project. We are carrying out this work in the fields with a productive associations and social institutions. And we believe that SSE is an alternative model. It's a real model where we have the participation of political stakeholders, municipalities, productive associations, and social organizations. They are very well known in our area. Okay, we also have Javier Gastelou. It's a pleasure to have you here to, to see your ideas. And so what's your motivation for transformation? How are you doing this from your own business model at the local level? And how do you contribute to us as E? Okay, thank you. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Oh, for us, it's a great pleasure to be here in this beautiful Mexican land. We are very blessed to have been able to come here and thank you for uh, all of the organizers and all of the collaborators that have been working with partners that we have in Belgium and Spain. And the motivation of this project is that uh, INI itself in our land, in our culture, INI means collective work, it means collaborative work. So if I help you, you help me, and we move together towards uh, a final goal. So what we want to do as an association is to make progress with this concept. So we want to continue with the inclusion of women, uh, children, we work with families with a gender perspective and gender equality. And then we work as a community with the municipal governments trying to have an influence in public policies and to try to make decisions at the social level to achieve co-responsibility for gender equality. For example, we have productive initiatives we have water, projects related to water for irrigation or for human consumption in the area where we live. There is no great availability of water. So it's very important to know how to manage it and how to use it correctly to avoid using chemicals and using natural fertilizers. And this will allow us to reach all of the levels of society from the very from the very small units, such as the family, to the community level. So our aim is to improve living conditions in our society. And so there are not one or two, but uh, 24 SSE initiatives that we are implementing with two different projects. 
Based on your experience so far, do you think that this model could be replicated or do you think you could work as a team with other associations or with other people? And if that is the case, who are you working with? Yes, the SSE model, as was said this morning, it allows us to think about new generations and this is an investment in the future. So the fact that we, as part of the institution, are convinced of the SSE is key because this is the only way to change our world and to avoid the degradation, for example, to avoid destruction, to prevent poverty from rising, uh, vulnerability among the families. Therefore, we believe in it and we are doing what we can to improve the situation. So I think this belief is extremely important because we work with principles and values that are perhaps not tangible, but we need to work because we see that the world is losing humanity, values, and the way to go forward is to enhance SSE. Okay, Billy, I would like to ask you, how do you engage and how do you uh, increase the level of passion within the um, organizations or among youth? How do you how do you engage them? How do you incentivize this and how do you plant the seed in new generation for these new ideas? Well, it's a very interesting question, I think. This morning I was paying close attention to what researchers were saying and to what uh, academics were saying. And it's sometimes very hard to take that knowledge and practice to the field, to, to put it all into practice. As an institution, we follow a methodology called popular participation. And this methodology allows us to work with organizations. And with the, the goal is to highlight what they can do. So in the area where we work, uh, we have a I. It's a collaboration work between families and peoples. And this is a community work. Community work is another principle upon which our initiatives are based. And this is with the purpose of providing more value to our practices, our, our very uh, deep, deeply held practices. So we also need participation as a principle. Women, young people, girls need to participate as well because they also have more aptitude to work with um, techno technology or technological tools. And some of them are in La Paz in Bolivia because they have access to technology. What about you, Javier? Do you know if you have social media that you can follow? Yes, we do have a website, which is Aini, A Y N I dot org and dot bov sorry b o v and we have we also have a facebook page where we hoped to share some of our experience here in this event so we will uh, share all of our initiatives it has been a great pride for us to share all of this with you so we would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to make this presentation Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I'm sure that the results will be very positive. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can take your seats now and thank you for your presentation. We would also like to remind you all about the importance of this activity, which is to have an exchange between you and, um, and and our team. So this is a great opportunity for those who made the effort to come all the way here and to present their proposals, to have uh, the chance to talk about their projects. And this is also available in three languages around the world. So French, Spanish, English, it's all so that you can 
have access to all these ideas that have been developed. I'm, I'm sure that a great partnerships will be a result of this forum. I'm sure that based on the presentations, there will be new connections and new opportunities to create partnerships and to grow. Therefore, you know, we also need to protect ourselves and follow all of the rules for the pandemic, of course. So now we are going to welcome Magda Patricia Estrada, she comes from the Special Managing Unit for Solidarity Organizations. How are you? Um, good, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm very glad that you are here with us today. Thank you for being here to present your organization. Could you tell us about it? Yes, gladly. Well, I am a part of the state organization. We are a special management unit for Colombia. And what we do is promote solidarity economy. So what we do is focus on the solidarity part of SSE mainly. I would like to ask you uh, how it was created, how the organization began. Well, our organization was legally formed in 2011. It was a managing department for solidarity economy. This is how it was conceived. So we were following a process of transformation and we stopped attending to the committee of the ministries. And now we are part of the Ministry of Labor. So we support in the improvement of living conditions for society. How long have you been working in the organization? Well, for over 10 years now. So it has been very interesting to be a part of the, the changes that have happened. At this time in our country, due to uh, changes in agreements, we had to start thinking about how solidarity economy could be an alternative uh, to maintain peace. Um, there is a great mobilization of the FARC, as you know, so it's very important to work with the national network for rural cooperatives and promotion of the economy. This is one of the projects that make a comprehensive uh, rural reforms possible, and this is one of the intentions of the FARC mobilizations in Colombia. So tell us about the organization. How many people work there? We know that it's a, an effort that you're representing today, but I'm sure that there are many people who work there. Yes, of course. Um, our main headquarters are in Bogota, where we work together with other organizations. And we also have uh, meetings with contractors in states, in several states of Colombia. Um, in Colombia, we talk about, we, we say departments when we talk about states. So uh, in an area close to the Amazon, we don't have such a great presence because it's a remote area. However, we do have coverage to meet the needs of the community whenever it comes to solidarity economy. Okay, do you have a question, Luis? Yes, I, I, f I think that what you, you are saying, Magda, is very interesting. First and foremost, welcome, and thank you for uh, taking advantage of this forum to uh, disseminate the efforts that you are doing and to talk about and, and to talk about the projects that you're working on. Well, the pandemic, of course, has made us analyze several different things, but now we need to accelerate the changes. Is that right? Uh, do we need to work at a faster pace due to the pandemic? Well, we have several different actions or missions to promote solidarity economy and the creation, strengthening um, business development, integration, and the level of protection provided to our organizations in the sector. But we also have very specific goals for solidarity economy. And we wish to provide um, more incentives to the population. So in our country, it is now possible to have more 
of an entrepreneurial approach and our units started carrying out several different actions to align to new regulations promoted in December 2020. Okay, Magda, if you could share with our participants today, what is the main contribution of your organization to the world? If you could invite them to do something based on your example, what would be the contribution for your organization? Well, since uh, it has been established in today's forum, uh, education should really mobilize all of the stakeholders in the territory. At this point, we are designing a solidarity program which aims to make every territory assume the responsibility of being, of being solidary, showing solidarity. And there are many stakeholders present in the territory grassroots organizations and academic institutions, municipal governments through secretariats. And we all have a vision of solidarity economy, of the solidarity economy. So it could have several different contributions regarding uh, territories. It is very important to work with other authorities in several institutions and countries to be able to exchange our experiences and ideas to know how to improve the programs, plans, and projects to respond to the needs of our countries. Okay, I agree completely. Thank you very much. What's your social media? Yes, you can find us on a website, uios.gov. Uh, gov.co for Colombia, and there you can find uh, information which is provided to all of the citizens of Colombia, but also to all of those who are interested in learning about solidarity economy and our efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have Bolivia, Colombia, and a great presence from Latin America. Thank you very much. Let's give her a round of applause. Congratulations. And we have more cases to share. They are going to share their experience, their approaches, their methodology. Um, Mariana Rita Ramirez from the DASU Cooperative. Uh, Mariana, let's talk about the great steps that are being taken. Please uh, take a seat if you want to feel more comfortable. Uh, how are you feeling, Mariana? How are you? Where are you from? I am from Mexico City. OK, perfect. When did you have this idea about starting your project? How, how did it come up? Well, the idea came from the fact that people with disabilities, any kind of disabilities and uh, neurodiverse individuals are usually neglected when they seek a job and when they um, when they, they they apply for a job. So when this happens, when this started happening constantly and we realized that there was a great need there, we created the cooperative. We also are eligible for quality education, just like anyone else. Therefore, there is a need for a consultancy and uh, for a cooperative to be created in order to have that uh, high quality education. And that's why DASU was created. It is an Otomi word, an indigenous word called, uh, which means uh, dignity. So we focus on providing decent work for those who have disabilities and who are neurodiverse. That is why it was necessary to create this cooperative. Uh, you know, Mariana, ever since the forum began, uh, people in the audience have highlighted the importance of having an inclusion approach in all of the actions that are being taken within the social and solidarity economy. So where are these initiatives headed? Well, uh, first and foremost, it's all about coherence and consistency because there are people in this world who have zero impact. What, what, what does that mean? Well, it means that you don't pollute. 
so we consume uh, organic vegetables and so on but i have a list here of everything that we intend with um, labor inclusion we want companies to make reasonable adjustments what does that mean it means that those with disabilities should not be able to should not be uh, made to work eight hours straight they should only work four hours. And that's not because we are lazy, but rather because that those are the necessary working conditions for us. So this is what it means to be a socially responsible company. Yes, a socially responsible company. All socially responsible companies should adjust the working schedule for people who have disabilities or are neurodiverse, for example. And there should also be empowerment. And of course, empowerment comes at a, at a cost, it's a monetary cost, because there are specialists who have to take part in this empowerment process, such as psychologists, for example. In order for us to feel empowered, we must have psychologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, and that is why we have created this cooperative. Empowerment is a very strong word, and therefore we have created a cooperative that provides a better outcome for everyone. Mariana, how many hands uh, work behind you? How many people do you have within your organization? We have four about to turn to seven, and there are many people who support us in social media as well. Yes, and I'm sure that after this presentation, you will have more support even. It's a very important initiative because companies should really be responsible, as you were saying, being socially responsible and committing to providing opportunities, not only building ramps and companies or having um, efforts done uh, without thinking, just knowing deeper about these needs. It's very interesting to know more about your organization. If you think about the future, and if you wanted to tell the world something, what would you say, how would you say you contribute to the, the place you work in? Well, we have uh, training and we are recording everything in photo and video. We are recording everything that we are learning right now. And uh, I think that our contribution is that we are making people with disabilities visible. They should be visible no matter what the disability is and also neurodiversity. What is neurodiversity? Well, it includes depression, anxiety, schizophrenia. It is all very close to us, so please take a close look at everyone who is next to you and take a look at us. And we want to work, and we want to have decent work. And in this context, now in, in the pandemic, many indicators have gone up as well. I think that this is a great lesson of what it means to give constantly because we can all give for one day, but to give and to give constantly every single day and to uh, have this mission to help other people um, as, as well as you can, well, it's necessary to have, be very consistent with what you're doing, just like you said. Thank you very much, Mariana. Uh, if, you, if we wish to participate in your efforts, if you want to help you, or if we, we want to fight with you, uh, how do we do that? Well, I have a phone number. It's 5530592483. And we are still building our platforms with the young uh, people at the National Polytechnical Institute. And we also have an email address. It's my full name, Mariana Rita Flores. Yes, that's true. Mariana Rita Ramirez Flores at Gmail is my my personal email. You can write to me there. We are looking forward to your help and we can offer all of the experience that we we have. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great commitment for all of us who are participating here to really become a part of this effort. Thank you. And let's give her a round of applause. And now let's um, invite the next organization that we have invited. It's very nice because 
uh, we had the opportunity to talk to them directly and they are representing a great number of change agents that are all around the world doing something very interesting. Now we will have two more guests. We have Itzel Villa and Yari. They are people just like you and I, just like everyone who is on screen right now. They had a project at some point. They wanted to do something else, and this is how they created their initiatives. How are you? We are doing very well, thank you. Okay, thank you for joining us. This event is essential, and it's organizations like yours that have been created uh, based on the needs that have been identified. So talk to us about your organization itself. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. We come from the Televisa Foundation. And the initiative that we want to share with you is called Posible Cot. We've been working uh, with entrepreneurship for a very long time, but we also realized that there are different types of entrepreneurship where we can add value. And that is where the effort came from. It's a cooperative program where we saw the opportunity to complement what we did with several different working tools. So there are many associations that focus only on the technical side. So we saw an opportunity to complement the work that they do with the side of training. Just as was said before, it's interesting how a project can stem from another one. So uh, we know that one project can inspire others. How long ago did you start? Well, the pilot uh, was the, the pilot ran in 2019, and then we optimized the program. In 2019, we did it in Mexico City, and by 2020, we identified some regions in southern Mexico where we started implementing the program as well. So during 2020 and 2021, we mainly worked in Yucatan, uh, Chiapas, Oaxaca, Estado de Mexico, Puebla, and Mexico City. Okay, uh, in many other countries in, have foundations that have existed for years. Um, sometimes here, when we hear the word foundation, sometimes we doubt about uh, the the, the money and how the money will be used in the US, for example, they have many foundations and this is a, sol a solitary way to uh, support a community. So Girardi, what has been your experience in the Mexican as in the Mexican culture? Well, thank you very much for providing this opportunity to speak about our program. You are right when you talk about foundations, sometimes and there is a misunderstanding or misconception. But in the Televisa Foundation, we have uh, talked about entrepreneurship for a very long time, and we identified the need to help co collectives and cooperatives in a very different way. So we reach vulnerable communities through our partners, and we bring people who contribute to this ecosystem and that are known by the beneficiaries. They have a great credibility and we can work together with them and provide opportunities to address everything uh, that they need. So we provide a training, business training in governance, leadership, uh, marketing, finance, and funding. So together with our partners, they can grow and learn about the technical side, but also about the business side that's led by us. As a foundation in our niche, we have the opportunity to manage resources through this type of programs. Well, yes, this is a great responsibility and it's a great commitment as well. I would like to ask you, this was mentioned in another group, the pandemic uh, turned the world upside down and it complicated many situations for us. But from an objective perspective, I would like you to share with everyone who is here at the forum right now, what has been your experience? How did you face the situation? And do you have any advice for those who have not recovered yet? Working with the community was complicated. This program could not easily be adapted to the digital environment because uh, sometimes they are in communities where there's no access to electricity 
So we created a set of strategies, different strategies using, for example, SMS messages or tools that could be printed out and distributed and, and on paper. We came together with the state government and provided training and they took print materials to distribute knowledge to the other members of cooperatives. We also created small groups with no more than 20 participants so that we could follow all of the uh, COVID rules. And we had mentorships, for example, happening by phone calls and other media in order to provide knowledge and content to all of the cooperative representatives. Well, Girardi also experienced the side of the pandemic. Do you want to add something to that? Well, we really had to adapt and mainly uh, listen to our beneficiaries, know about their reality, know about their situation, and break this traditional uh, training format. It was all face-to-face -face or fully virtual, so we had to incorporate many different tools and empower our representatives because we have um, the support of one or two representatives per cooperative, but some some of them are more than thousands. So we need to provide tools that can be used easily and give proper follow up so that uh, there are increasingly more people. So you provide all of the trainings for the teams. Have you So what about the volunteering? We all want to do something, but I think there needs to be a roadmap. There needs to be a working model. So it's very important that you start to pave the way and to show that this is not a hobby. This is a mission backed up by principles, values, goals, resources, and it's based on life itself. Yes, and I would just like to say that if there is a will, there is a way. So uh, what are your social media accounts? You can follow us on all social media platforms. Uh, our name is Posible Mexico. Our email is posible.gov at fundaciontelevisa.org. And there are some initiatives, such as cop.possible.rg.mx. Um, thank you, congratulations, and congratulations to the whole team, because I'm sure there are many people working with you as well. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to our guests. It has been incredible to talk to you. And we have another organization joining us today. Thank you. We are going to talk to Juliana Mutis from ICADER. Thank you very much for accepting this invitation, uh, Juliana. Please take a seat. Thank you for accepting the invitation. What do you do? Who are you? I think your microphone is on. Well, Nicade is a company in Barcelona, Spain, and also in Mexico City and Colombia. We have projects in all of Latin America, Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru. We have also worked in Morocco. And we focus on business development with a direct impact for the preservation of the environment and inclusion. So there are two lines of action in our case. There is direct follow-up to grassroots organizations and companies in the development process for this type of nature-based and inclusion businesses. And there's also an online platform that works as a, a business opportunity marketplace for, um, for, for businesses that have high impact. So what we want to do is to bridge the gap between the wealth of tradition, culture, natural resources, ecosystems and ecosystem preservation to and the, the market trends. In this type of forums, Juliana, we realize that there are many cases, there are many situations where we have to give a very big, to, to take very big steps more quickly at a faster pace. Because, well, 
When it comes to inclusion, we still need to have a much higher level of inclusion in society. How do you achieve that? Well, the main challenge that Nicadel tries to address is the process of bridging market gaps. So we work with biosphere reserves and there are natural resources that have a great value in the market. But there is a great distance between the local reality and the market reality. First, it is necessary to follow up with the organizations and to have more visibility of these markets because there are cooperatives, for example, who are working with very high quality products that are sold at a price, uh, at, a, at a lower price, because in the market it is not valued as such, and also other initiatives. So there's also other raw materials that are being used and they have a certain price, but the, the cost is very high. So there is a very limited understanding at the local level about the value of the products that are being developed. And then there's also a commercial relationship between companies that are interested in these products and local cooperatives, and they need to have a fairer agreement between the parties. It's important to have mutual acknowledgement of uh, each other's contributions. Well, uh, Juliana, this is uh, a great challenge. It is very challenging to to have value processes, these types of exchange programs and trade in general, we still have a lot of work to do. There is a lot to be done. I would also like to share something and emphasize the fact that sometimes there are problems that we see in our country, uh, believing that it's only our own problem and that they only happen in our own bubble. But this is another a very tangible case. It's a situation that is happening all around the world. So what advice would you give to people who are watching around the world um, about making a dream come true, about creating an organization just like yours? Well, I think that based on the lessons that we have learned, I don't know if this is a good advice or not, but in our experience, the work that we have done analyzing uh, what the, the trends are in the market and what is being done at a local level is very important. I remember that a few years ago in the Yucatan Peninsula, we worked with honey producers and honey is a commodity and in international markets sometimes the price is very low but for cooperatives uh, in biosphere reserves the honey quality could also be classified as an ingredient not a commodity because it provides color um, smells and flavors to other um, to other types of food and they are in the category above just common honey. It's important to acknowledge the value of the product and to understand market trends. This is the main exercise that needs to be done since the beginning in order to find a different perspective and to negotiate in a different way. I think that this is exactly the right time to start creating these opportunities. Where can people look you up or have training? Uh, how can they find you? Well, we have a link at their web page, uh, Inca, Ninka, D -E -V .com. And we have a contact uh, functionality there. Okay, uh, Juliana, could you please repeat the website so that they can write it down, please? Yes, it is www.ninka-v.com. I'm sure you will find all the necessary information to 
request further assistance or to work together with them. They are doing this great job and it's also very necessary because we need to change and transform value chains. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let's give Juliana a very big round of applause. Okay, Luis Fernando, uh, we are going to close our runway now. I don't know if anyone here in the forum wants to ask any questions, comments in the chat. We are going to give a, a summary. And I think that this was a great ending to the event. For all of those who are present here in the museum, Jose Luis Parra, we had some great coffee tasting. Uh, come Calpetic, you're very welcome. They were in charge of waking us up, so thank you from Calpetic. Capeltic. It was great. It was great coffee, and we're making great effort to transform things. We are with Omar Alejandro and Victor Crescencio Vilchis. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for showing us Carpeltic. So I think this is a wonderful close for the day. I agree, Paola. I think associations like this one and many others benefit communities, families, both men and women. Because of what you contribute to the growth of your states. And that's very interesting. How did you get started? Yes, well, we are part of a social and solidarity economy integrator called Yomolatel. In our indigenous language, which is Central, Yomolatel means together we work, together we walk, and together we dream. This is what our cosmovision is, the community. People should always be at the forefront of any initiative. So this incubator is made up of three companies that help producers have a fair income. In Yomolatel, which is a cooperative of producers, we have organic honey on sale, we have coffee and you could taste our coffee this morning. And all of these businesses were meant to support producers. Producers are at the center of this project. This project began in the early 1990s when the Jesuits came to Chiapas and they saw that there were producers that they could buy organic products from like coffee at very low prices. So they started inviting producers to create a cooperative that was the origin of social and solidarity economy in Chiapas with the goal of helping our local producers. So Capeltic was born with the aim of encouraging our producers and show them that their coffee is a high quality product, it can get sold and they can receive a better income. Because when they worked with intermediaries, they bought the coffees and at very low prices and then they sold it very high prices. Now the initiative has grown and we do many other things. Capeltic has become a well-known brand here in Mexico City and in all other states of our country. And in fact, we have exported our coffee to other countries such as Germany, Spain, the USA, Canada. And this project continues to grow. 
I think Mexico has wonderful coffee, and that's why I think many countries, such as the ones you mentioned, are interested in getting Mexican coffee, and more specifically, from Chiapas. What does that mean to you, being able to bring a quality product to the world? I feel very proud of it, as... My friend here said, there is a lot that goes to a coffee cup. And often we don't know that, so we don't value that coffee cup. But when you start getting involved, and if you feel passionate about coffee like myself, it becomes a wonderful experience, especially to be able to collaborate with others and to see how other people's work gets valued. Because we work together with producers, roasters, and we are at the end of the chain. So that, I think, is what sets us apart. We offer good prices, fair trade. We work with roasters directly, and we sell the coffee directly. So everyone is trained in all of our value chain in management, tasting, we have good quality control, I would say. So I think it's great to be able to share this with you, with everyone, and to see people enjoy it. And now that you talk about the final product, the coffee, we have it right here in front of us. You can go try it. And now you can value all the work that is behind this. Thank you to your team. I love that idea of getting rid of intermediaries and Capeltic is a great family and it's good to know that it's doing well. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Where can we find you? On Facebook, Capeltic Nuestro Café and Instagram at Capeltic. Okay, wonderful. You can find us in the Ibero University here in Mexico City, in Iteso in Guadalajara, and Ibero Puebla in Puebla. That's great. So we want to invite everybody to try this coffee. We believe it's great coffee. Please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for your effort. Please come up here so that we can take a picture. Thank you. Congratulations. There are many people who are following us, and I'm sure they will learn from your ideas. So thank you to all. And look at this. Everyone is very well organized for the picture. Okay, so let's take that official picture. Wonderful. Thank you. Once again, a round of applause. And it is thanks to them that this forum is so strong. Thanks to the effort of people like you who dared make a difference. So thank you. And to everyone else who is listening to us, congratulations as well. En Sociedad Cooperativa Trabajadores de Pascual SCL, somos más que una embotelladora de bebidas de frutas. A través del tiempo, hemos demostrado que es posible la organización laboral para consolidar una empresa sana, que hoy es ejemplo del sistema cooperativista en México. Con bebidas como Boeing, Pato Pascual y Lulú, que son nuestros estandartes, nos hemos mantenido en el gusto y preferencia de los consumidores de varias generaciones. Para conformarnos como cooperativa, hubo la necesidad de sensibilizar a todos los trabajadores y optar por un estilo laboral y de vida que nos permitiera mejorar nuestra situación económica, social y cultural. Este sistema ha logrado crear una sinergia de productividad y beneficio colectivo. Ser una empresa como esta es un gran orgullo, un ejemplo de perseverancia y esfuerzo, donde el consumidor es quien se beneficia al tener a su alcance productos nacionales de la mejor calidad. 
en Cooperativa Pascual. Estamos conformados por una extraordinaria infraestructura acorde al siglo XXI, en el que trabajamos con equipo y tecnología de vanguardia, lo que nos permite fijar metas a corto y largo plazo basadas en las necesidades del mercado y las preferencias de los consumidores. Contamos con dos plantas de producción, una en San Juan del Río, Querétaro, y otra en Tizayuca, Hidalgo, en las que elaboramos toda la gama de productos aplicando los más altos estándares de calidad, con la confianza de responder en tiempo y forma a la gran demanda del cada vez más competido mercado de bebidas. En estas plantas producimos más de 40 millones de cajas anuales, con el apoyo de cuatro sedis en la Ciudad de México, 30 sucursales y un creciente número de distribuidores autorizados a lo largo del territorio nacional. Comercializamos nuestras ya tradicionales marcas como son Boy, Pato Pascual, Lulu, Nectasis, Agua Purificada, Mexicola y Power Dog, además de la Leche Pascual. Nuestras plantas tienen la certificación de sistemas de gestión de calidad ISO 9001-2015 en los procesos de elaboración de bebidas, néctares y pulpas de fruta. Asimismo, contamos con la certificación de FDA en Estados Unidos, lo que nos permite exportar nuestros productos a este país. Para la elaboración de nuestros productos, utilizamos fruta selecta, verificada directamente por nuestra área de control de calidad. Apoyamos el desarrollo y crecimiento del campo nacional, ya que beneficiando a los productores del campo mexicano, en Cooperativa Pascual consumimos más de 20 mil toneladas de frutas al año. Y con la compra directa del azúcar que se requiere para la elaboración de las bebidas que comercializamos, se apoya también a los ingenios azucareros de nuestro país. En una empresa como esta, basamos parte de nuestra fortaleza en la distribución de nuestros productos. Por esto, contamos con una infraestructura de unidades de reparto, asegurando así que nuestras bebidas se puedan disfrutar en cada rincón de México y el extranjero. Para Cooperativa Pascual, el consumidor es lo más importante. Por esto, nuestras decisiones, el personal, las inversiones en tecnología y capacitación se enfocan en satisfacer a los paladares más exigentes. La excelencia de nuestros productos nos ha merecido diversos premios, como el de la excelencia europea, el americano de calidad y reconocimientos internacionales al prestigio comercial de bebidas de marca y calidad. Dentro de la cooperativa tenemos una Fundación Cultural Trabajadores de Pascual y del Arte AC con un amplio acervo pictórico de importantes artistas. Esta fundación realiza exposiciones por todo el país y apoya diversos proyectos culturales independientes. Por otra parte, contamos con un centro recreativo ubicado en San Juan Teotihuacán para el esparcimiento de los trabajadores y del público en general. Orgullosos de nuestra apuesta por el crecimiento sostenible, el compromiso con el medio ambiente, la creación de empleos y la integración, Llevamos nuestras bebidas a cada vez más personas, que son la auténtica base de nuestro futuro. Ser una cooperativa no es solo una figura administrativa, es la orgullosa realidad de una empresa 100% mexicana. Somos lucha, somos calidad, somos la experiencia de más de 80 años en el mercado, somos líderes en la elaboración de bebidas, somos Cooperativa Pascual, calidad que sabe a tradición.